Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We are playing with and testing out hot new makeup that is completely cruelty free. We're trying the new super hyped House Labs concealer, a new foundation from Smashbox, beautiful new shimmer eyeshadows and bronzing sticks from Trixie Cosmetics. What I'm most excited about is everything is completely cruelty free, including our brushes. Because in 2023, I genuinely don't understand why every brand isn't cruelty free. So let's go ahead and dive headfirst into all of this new makeup because I'm hoping together we discover some new smash hits. We're gonna start things out with the new Rare Beauty Brow Harmony Precision Pencil. So this is in the shade Soft Blonde and full disclosure, I have been using this and she is nice. You guys know I'm a drugstore Bean, especially when it comes to brow pencils. I just think there are so many good brow pencils at the drugstore, but there's something unique about this and that's saying a lot. It almost feels like a pomade melted down into a stick because sometimes when brow pencils are too hard, they can skip while you're filling or if it's too waxy, it can kind of overfill and maybe even crumble a little bit and get a little bit like tangled up in your brow hairs. Does that make sense? And this one too, in soft blonde particularly, I love to always really use like a taupe or soft blonde, just because I feel like it ends up not looking too dark. Taupes or cool tone blondes can look a little green, not this one. I would say the closest to this at the drugstore is probably my like holy grail elf pencil, but the only difference with that one is it's not gonna give you as sharp of an edge as this one is, because this has a really fine, fine tip. I also find that this one really stays in place for me throughout the day because it has that almost like melted down pomade, like I was saying, consistency. It really stays on the brow where other formulas that are a little bit too soft, I almost feel like by the end of my makeup, I have to almost redo my brows because it's kind of moved or come off. This one really adheres to the skin, dries down and doesn't budge. Now it's time to prime our lids with the new House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Hydrating and Depuffing Concealer. So there's very similar ingredients in this to the foundation. And because of all the skincare ingredients, this claims to be able to depuff the under eyes in four weeks. So I have two shades here, I have 04, Fair and 13 Light. The craziest thing about this is, so my friend Kevin, who co-hosts uh, my podcast with me, he picked these up for me and he knew my foundation shade. And there's a thing on the Sephora website that you can put your foundation shade in this in, and then it will tell you the concealer that matches you and the one for under your eyes to brighten. And the two it suggested for my face and my under eyes are perfect matches. So that's super exciting that that tool is that accurate. So I'm gonna prime the eyes with the lighter shade 04 Fair. And just to let you know, the brushes we are using today, the super colorful ones are from a brand called Moda Beauty, or I don't know if it's M-O-D-A. And the other set will be from Jessa Beauty. Everything I'm using today will be in the description box down below so you guys can see what it is. The only kind of outlier brush I'm using is this little paddle brush because I love it for cleaning up underneath the brows. This is also a Jessa Beauty set. It's the dupe for the Morphe REL set and it's just so good. So it's so funny because concealers that can work so well for me under the eyes may not be my favorite to clean up the brows. Under my eyes, I look for obviously the concealer to be super hydrating, not crease, but on my lids, I want something that's thinner but pigmented. So I usually gravitate towards the Anastasia Beverly Hills concealer or the Juvia's Place. But for instance, my NYX Serum concealer that I love under the eyes, I don't like to prime my lids with because I almost think it's not pigmented enough and I have to use too much to get the coverage where the other two give me the coverage with using a very little bit. So I gotta say so far, I'm liking this a lot. I really think this is giving me the coverage I like. It is so thin, but still pigmented that it's giving me the coverage I want without having to put a ton on. When I did bridal makeup, I loved the House Labs foundation for mature skin. It's one of the most beautiful foundations on mature skin. That being said, I have very combination and an oily T-zone, so it wasn't for me. And I'm hoping that this is also beautiful on mature skin, but in a different way than my NYX Serum Concealer. So that was always my go-to for mature skin under the eyes. And I'm just kind of hoping that this one isn't as glowy as the foundation. I'm hoping that it is as hydrating as the NYX, but just a little bit more coverage. So now I'm gonna go in, this is from Huda Beauty. This is the Easy Bake and Snatch powder. So she came out with her easy bake powders, the loose, typical loose powder, but she came out with them in pressed, which I really am excited about. So I'm taking the shade Cherry Blossom, which is like the pink one. It doesn't 
really look pink in the pan. But I'm just gonna take a little bit of that and set our concealer. But we're really gonna test this out set in the under eyes. So the star of this eyeshadow look is gonna be the Trixie Cosmetics Stay the Night Toppers. These things are stunning. I've been dying to go in with the blue. So what we're gonna do, because this really is gonna be the star of the show on the lid, I'm just gonna pop a blue eyeshadow powder in my crease and then we're gonna try this bad boy out. So I'm just throwing the shade Wicked Awesome from the Michaela Glam Lights collab the second palette. Glam Lights and this palette is also completely cruelty free. And then I'm using the shade, ironically, called No Harsh Lines. And that's what's gonna give us this beautiful gradient effect from the dark blue into this lighter blue. Holy blue, am I right? Don't worry, trust the process. It looks a little crazy, but this is a marathon, not a sprint. Stay hydrated. But come on, it's Trixie Mattel. We have to go bold. So I did lay the darker powder down on the lid because technically this is a topper, but why this has blown me away is because do you know how hard it is to find a full coverage blue liquid eyeshadow? I thought this was gonna be so much sheer than it is. So this is just one dip into the components and look at her. Now I'm gonna grab one of the Jessup brushes. This is a little bit smaller. It's party time. So we are just gonna paint this all over the lid. Oh my God. And before that dries down, I'm just gonna take this smaller brush and go ahead and start blending out that edge. Another thing I look for in my liquid shadows is a lot of liquid eyeshadows can be a little bit too oily and when you put them over powder and try to blend them it can actually remove the powder eyeshadow okay oh she is blending beautifully and no powder is coming off or being affected by this at all and i normally always go in with at least two coats of a shimmer eyeshadow because i'm nuts this is one coat and that's genuinely all this needs. Before I go ahead and clean up under my eyes with a makeup wipe, we're gonna go in with the Miami Lights Glitter Palette from Nabla. So they have, I think, four. I only pulled two of them for some reason. I don't know where I put the other two. I'm also kind of in the middle of moving, so it's really gonna take me a while to find it. We're gonna go in with the white silver shade. And then just to show you, this is the Ruby Lights Palette, which I have to use this in a fall makeup look. But I love glitters like this that are almost like loose glitters, but in a pressed pan. So there's a little bit of like an adhesive to it because let's be real, I'm not putting a glitter glue down with loose glitter flecks everywhere. They always say glitter is the herpes of the craft world. It gets everywhere. And this, I just feel like is a little bit more contained. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this on my finger and press this right on the center. I'm actually gonna dip a little bit into this purple cause it's a little bit more bluish. And the white is actually has a little bit more of a green undertone, which I don't want. And the real test for this as I start doing the rest of my makeup is to see if this, as it dries down, falls off the eyes onto my under eyes and ruins the rest of my makeup. So I'm taking a gamble here. So I turn the lights down a little bit and I'm hoping this will help you see a little better. The sparkle on these is ridiculous. Ridiculous. I was just going to start mascara and eyeliner and I have the new eyeliner from Kat Von D. I don't, I know they're coming out with a bunch of new, this is the tattoo pencil liner and I think they've been redoing them and um, my entire pencil was stuck in the lid and fell out of the tube. So that's not really the best sign. But then again, I know getting PR packages, a lot of it can like sit out on my porch for a little bit and probably melt, but still that's not great. And I thought this was black, but it's like kind of a cobalt gray. I really was just gonna use this for the tight line. So let's tight line with this and we'll just make sure as we do the rest of our makeup that it doesn't transfer down onto my waterline. I've used the KVD tattoo liner pencils before and they're really good. They really don't budge at all. But mainly what I wanted to talk about from KVD is the new full sleeve mascara. So this is a tubing mascara, which I embarrassingly must admit, I'm kind of late to the game too. Right out of the gate, I love the brush on this. It really grips the lashes and gives me volume. But a tubing mascara basically means that just with warm water, it's gonna come off as though it looks like lashes because it's coming right off the lash, like little tubes. You're not scrubbing forever. It is so easy to remove, but I will say my friend Kevin and I have worn this before and he was very teary and nothing budged. But then the minute he used warm water, it came off. So it is tear proof, but 
not waterproof. But this is something I have tried already and very, very much like. So here is the difference with verse without. Do with this what you will. I know it's on top of a blue showgirl eye, but tis what it is. And let's be real, you know mama doesn't get out of bed without her lashes on, so we are gonna pop on some lashes. These are from Velour Lashes, the plant fiber hemp derived lashes. So they're vegan and cruelty free, made from hemp, and it says you can get 20 plus multiple wears out of them. These are also nice and soft on the inside where it's not gonna cover all the eyeshadow. That's what I like in a lash that has almost a statement on the outside half, but isn't gonna cover up all the eyeshadow. We just work to make look flawless. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop these bad boys on and be right back. All right, the lashes are on. These look beautiful. They were a super flexible band, but sturdy enough that I hate when it's so thin, it like doesn't have enough meatiness to it that you can really put it where you need it. So that was a really nice balance. And like I said, they really have more drama on the outside, but it's not covering our beautiful eyeshadow at all. Now it's time for the Smashbox Always On Skin Balancing Foundation. When I just looked it up on the website, I think I fell in love. So this has hyaluronic acid in it, and it says that it is oil controlling with a natural finish. If you listen to my podcast, you know I am constantly saying I have had it with all the glowy, glowy, glowy foundations. Not all of us can wear them, and me being oily in my T-zone, I need a beautiful natural finish or a matte finish, so I love that this is natural because I feel like it could really appeal to everybody. I'm not going to go too heavy on this because I actually want to pick up the slack with the House Labs Concealer to see how that looks on the skin. It does say to shake well, and it says that it is primer infused. So we ain't using primer. So I'm using shade L20N. And like I said, we're just gonna use a little bit of this because I also like to test with foundations that it can thin out, that it's spreadable without causing texture issues. And to blend this out, I'm using the new REM foundation brush. This is the F1 brush. I have been loving this brush. Yes, it's a little dirty. It just fits in all all the best areas. And with something like this, you can use it with the sharp edge to like carve out brows or also buff like this. So it really is a beautiful dual purpose brush. And I can always tell as well the way something either does or doesn't stick to my nose is a big test of the foundation. I don't know if you guys are the same way, let me know. But some foundations for me just do not stick to my nose at all. And that's kind of a sign to me that there's just some sort of an ingredient in it that is not agreeing with the kind of natural oils on my skin. All right, so that is one pump of the foundation and it's looking very skin-like. Also on me, maybe unlike some other YouTubers you may follow, Mama's got forehead lines. So we are gonna be able to tell by the end of this situation whether she is gonna crease or not, which is also a big problem for me. Okie dokie. So this this is everything done. I have a little bit left on my hand and I'm gonna take it on a beauty sponge. I don't normally use like a beauty blender or a beauty sponge with my foundation, mostly only my concealer sometimes, but I wanna see if it's buildable with the sponge and just how it works with the sponge. So I am gonna take what's left on my hand, but this is also the new beauty sponge from REM Beauty that goes with the uh, foundation brush and I love the cut of this. So on this side, you're getting a classic beauty blender, but then this side is flat there, and then we have that sharp point there, and I really love that like for baking out and stuff, so I rarely see a new sponge with an innovative kind of look to it. Mainly people try to reinvent the beauty blender and it's just not as good as the typical egg shape. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna build it up, see if it's buildable, on my nose because I am pretty red. Okay, she definitely is buildable. And I gotta say, you can see the natural finish on this. It's not too glowy, it's not too matte. It really just looks like skin, but I wanna see up close because I have a lot of pores all in the center of my nose. This is looking great. And keep in mind we didn't use a primer, which I kinda love because that means you could maybe put a glowy primer under this or something with a little bit of like luminosity to it and not get oily because this is dialed a little bit more into matte territory, but we shall see. Now for the star of the show, the new House Labs Concealer. With the new House Labs Concealer, Sealer brush. This brush is so beautiful. 
She said in her video, it's shaped like a finger, which is kind of funny to think about, but it literally fits under here perfectly. So we're going in with the shade 04 Fair. Gonna just use a little bit, nothing too cray. And I love this brush as well because it's dense enough that you can stipple with it like this, almost like a beauty sponge, but it gives you a really beautiful airbrushed blend. Full disclosure, I have been playing with this already and I've been impressed, but I haven't done it with a full makeup look. So that is what I was really excited to try this out. Just a little bit on the forehead, the bridge of the nose. God, I love this brush. So now I'm gonna take the shade that matches my face in 13 light and just build up a little bit on areas my red is poking through. And again, I love a brush like this that you can stipple with because it's not gonna move the foundation underneath. Wow, she is looking very, very beautiful. So we are gonna use some cream bronzer and blush, but I like to set my concealer right away because we ain't playing games. So now we're gonna go back in with the Huda Beauty Easy Bake and Snatch pressed powder. And then look at this brush from Jessup. Look at her. This brush is so perfect for setting the under eyes. The way it fits right under the eye and just presses into the skin, which I'm happy I'm using the Huda powder with this because I don't want to use a new powder because if something ends up kind of going awry, I'll know it's the concealer and not the powder. So I'm really only going to set the under eye because I don't want to get powder anywhere else that we are going to put another cream product but I know for the most part I can set the center of the forehead. And now to warm up the complexion, we're going back to Trixie Cosmetics. These are the cream bronzing sticks. These I've been trying out for a couple weeks and I'm floored. First reason I love these, the shade range. Beautifully spaced out from light to super deep, but they all have the perfect neutral undertone where it's not too warm and not too cool. So if you really want a one and done product without having to bronze and contour, this is it. I wear this for guy makeup all the time. Once they're on the skin, it dries down where it is not gonna move. And for someone like me that has fine lines and does get oily and shiny, I don't want a goopy, slippy, slidey cream. This lasts on me all day and looks so beautiful. Three lightest shades. So here we have Sun Kissed. Sunny Bunny. This is the one I use, Sunset Tina, which you may be thinking, no, no but just wait. The second darkest for me is more cool tone. So if you're super fair, I actually think this might be a better bet for you. So I like to put cream products like this on the back of my hand to start to make sure I don't overuse it and draw too much on the skin. I am cheating again brushes. From the same set I used to carve out my concealer, this is the dupe for the REL. So I take my stippling brush and just dip in to the back of my hand and start carving out underneath our cheekbones. My husband is watching Mrs. Doubtfire in the living room right now and I'm so jealous. And then we're gonna go in a triangle shape here on the sides of the forehead. So see how swatched on my skin, you might think, oh my God, that's too dark. But then when you blend this out on the skin, look at this side of the face compared to not. It is Stunning. It's just such a beautiful way to add hydration into the skin, being a cream. But like I said, not a goopy, slippy, slidey cream, so you know it's gonna last on the skin, but not quite a cream to powder that it's gonna look dry. It is just a beautiful formula. So now I'm taking a little bit of the second lightest shade in Sunny Bunny just to contour the nose a little bit. Ooh, that is a perfect nose contour shade. And I also really like that the foundation has not been disturbed at all. Normally when I do too much construction and maintenance on the nose on top of foundation, the foundation just comes right off. But this Smashbox is staying where I put it. Now it's time for a little cream blush. These are the new Love Steady Liquid Blushes from Moira. The pinker one here is in the shade Adorn and the more warm Terracotta is in Chemistry. And they have two formulas. They have some that have a radiant finish and some that have a matte finish. So this one, Adorn, has a matte finish. So I'm gonna put a little bit on the back of my hand and just start stippling. Ooh, okay, we have pigment on the skin. Okay, that was easy. Wow, that blended in like a powder almost. It definitely has a matte finish, which I love because I feel like it's so hard to find a good matte liquid or cream blush, but that was it. That was literally just what I dipped in and that's, yeah. Done. 
And I'm surprised that blended so well because this is part of the Jessup set and this is probably technically like a powder brush. This formula would be stunning even on mature skin. If you're a little bit more dry, you should try the radiant finishes. But even if you do get a little shiny in the T-zone in this area, I mean, God. Oh my God, I can't believe that's one dip. All right, now with the fluffy Jessup brush from that set, I'm gonna dip back into the Easy Bake Powder and we are just going to set all of our liquids and creams. Oh my God, I forgot. I have another product here. This is the new one size turn up the base powder, which is so good. They came out with a white. Now I know what you're thinking. What the hell do you need a white powder for? A white powder is a makeup artist staple. MAC has a white foundation powder in shivering white, but it's switched to pro only. So it's kind of annoying that everybody can't get their hands on it. I wanna show you the power of a white powder. You don't wanna wear a ton of concealer and you wanna brighten and give yourself that lift. I already put the powder on this side compared to the other side and look at the difference in the brightness and the lift. So on a little fluffy brush, I'm just taking a little bit of this, tapping off the excess and think of this almost as a brightening powder and I'm just pressing this in places. I want to be a little bit more bright, awake, and highlighted. So see, I'm also using this to kind of blend in the edges of my blush and bronzer. This is even what I use to highlight the brow bone when you don't want a shimmer, which I don't really love a shimmer on my brow bone, just to give me that differentiation. And I use this to blend out the edges of the blue. Same with under the contour. If you don't like baking and putting on a lot of heavy powder, using this just to carve out underneath that contour to brighten and really give your contour that sharpness, especially for someone like me that doesn't like to put a ton of concealer in my T-zone just because I feel like it always creases on me. This is an amazing way to highlight without having to pour on a bunch of liquids. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly finish up my under eyes with the same two eyeshadows from the Michaela Glam Lights collection. First by tucking Wicked Awesome super close to the lash line and then just buffing out the edges and softening it a little bit with no harsh lines. So I don't have any new highlighters, so I'm just gonna use the Rare Beauty. So we're gonna do a little bit of Enlighten, the lighter one on the inner corner here. Ooh, well that just brought her together. And now a little bit of Exhilarate, which is more champagne toned. What I like to do is press it on just like that, and then actually use my finger just to blend it in warm it up and soften it. Little on the cupid's bow. To set the brows, I'm using the new Rare Beauty Clear Brow Gel. Again, I have played with this. Man, does it hold the brows in place. The brush is super, super small, so you can be super detailed with it. This actually kind of gives you a little bit more of like a laminated brow, like manipulates where the brows go. You know I'm the drugstore guy, so you know it's painful for me to recommend anything that's not insanely affordable. Again, same as the brow pencil, man. There is just something special about these Rare Beauty brow products. Sounds ridiculous to say, but th these are some of my favorite brows I've ever done on myself. Lastly, for lips. Lawless just came out with a beautiful range of nude lipsticks. This is how you do a launch of nude lipsticks. These two are standouts for me. The one that's a little bit darker and pinker is in the shade Wedding Day, and then the super light one that I almost use in the center to brighten is called Platinum. So I'm gonna pair it with their Forget the Filler Lip Liner. This is in the shade Nude Honey. Okay, and now for Wedding Day Lip. So I'm just gonna use my finger to kind of feather it into the lip liner and blend it. Ooh, that is so beautiful. I get why it's called Wedding Day. And now I'm gonna take Platinum and we're just gonna do this right in the center. Ooh, like, come on. Now to set everything, I'm gonna use a new setting spray, the Skin Loyalty Blur Mattifying Set Setting Spray from LYS. This is a natural finish, and I did an eyeshadow test with this, so I like swatched an eyeshadow, sprayed it on, let it dry down, went back and forth, really held it in place. So I know this keeps the makeup on, and I love the sprayer. I want a fine mist. 
All right, we have reached the final look. I'm absolutely obsessed with the way this came out. So kind of a rapid fire roundup of everything. Some of this, like I said, I've tried. Some of it was first impressions. All the Rare Beauty brow products are elite. There really is something so special about these brow products. If you are gonna spring or you are gonna spend a little bit more money or you have a Sephora gift card, I really think these are even better than like Anastasia and Benefit. There, I said it. The Trixie Cosmetics Stay the Night Shimmer Toppers. It's kind of difficult to even dispute because look at this. I've had this on for close to three hours now. We have zero creasing. It is packing just as much of a punch. I'm so impressed by these. I'm gonna need these in like 10 more shades. I love the KVD mascara. As far as the KVD eyeliner, I did tight line with that. It's especially me wearing contacts. My eyes always water when I do lashes or whatever. And I do get a little bit of black on my waterline because it transfers down. This didn't at all. Another thing too was the Nabla Glitter Palettes. And again, like three hours on the eyes now, we have zero glitter kind of drying and falling. I already ranted and raved about the Trixie Cosmetics Bronzer. This is with no extra powder bronzer contour beefing this up. This is nothing but this. This looks so hydrating, so beautiful, but stays in place like nobody's business throughout the day. Wears like a dream. This hands down has become my new favorite cream bronzer contour hybrid, especially for the price. The Huda Beauty Easy Bake and Snatch Press Powders. Love them. I love the loose powder, and I'm sure this is the same exact formula. Sorry, I just smelled that like a weirdo. But you know the smell of the original ones. It's like perfume. It's so heavily fragranced. These don't have any smell. If you love the Huda Beauty loose, but don't like the smell, you have these. But the only downside, if you really want that pink powder, I would maybe skip Cherry Blossom in the press because she is not that pink. The Moira Liquid Blush. Can't believe this is still the blush. I was so prepared to have to put a powder to reinforce it, and this is it. It looks beautiful on my texture, on the sides of my nose. The Moda brushes blended like a dream. The Jessup to die for. I have so many Jessup brushes. The REM foundation brush heaven. And yes, the House Labs Concealer. This brush is absolutely fantastic. I will say it, this is the best concealer brush I've ever used. The dome that this has to hug underneath, to stipple, to put this on, the actual concealer and the formula, this is exactly what I hoped for. I wanted the NYX Serum Concealer just more hydrating. And this is a your skin but better unreal formula, let alone the ingredients in here to depuff over time. But the big test with this is I would recommend this for mature skin. And I always say too, I would rather use a little bit of a fuller coverage product that really emulsifies and spreads and looks beautiful because it's more pigmented rather than needing to pile on a ton of a thinner, sheer coverage formula. I saved the best for last. I am so picky with foundations. I have found two foundations over the past two years for me that are phenomenal. The Dior Forever Matte and the Revlon Colorstay Full Coverage Matte. Not only does this foundation look absolutely breathtaking, I'm gonna get closer. It looks like my skin. But for me to be able to use a natural finish foundation that is not making me shiny in my T-zone, but is still oil controlling, blurring, has a built-in primer, so I have no primer under this. And the best thing about this, obviously when I go like this, I have lines. When I relax my forehead, there is literally zero settling and creasing. I'm gonna have to film with this again early in the morning and wear this all day to see the wear that this has. I cannot wait to wear this again. I don't know why I'm genuinely mad that I didn't not like anything? Is that okay? I promise, I genuinely loved everything. Holy crap! I was hoping at the beginning of this that we were gonna get some smash hits, and um, there are genuinely so many things that we just tried that are gonna become staples in my routine. Thank you guys so much for watching. As I mentioned before, everything I used is in the description if you wanna check it out. Let me know if you have tried any of this, or if you're excited to, or anything you want me to try. For many more videos just like this, as well as some brand new content, because mama's buying a house, so you're gonna get a lot of house content. Make sure to like this video, as well as subscribe to the channel. Turn on those push notifications so you never miss an upload. I love you guys wherever you are. I hope you are happy, safe, and healthy. I will see you soon on the next video. Bye, guys.